Here is my $5 inconspicuous locking spare tire mount for my utility trailer. Coming up, I'll show you how that works. When finding a location to mount the spare tire for my utility trailer, I want to be sure that it's not going to be in the way, that it's secure, as in not easy to steal, and also cost the least amount of money as possible. There's this option, but I think it'll get in the way of accessing the trailer box, and if I move it too far forward, it'll get in the way of the jack as well. Plus, it costs like $65, and I don't even think it comes with all the hardware. I possibly could mount it to the side of the bed rail here, but I have a feeling that'll get in the way also, especially when I'm tying down cargo. Not to mention, I'm constantly getting on and off the trailer from the side, and inevitably, I'll catch my foot on it and fall on my face, I'm sure of it. And finally, both of the aforementioned mounting locations leave it out in the open, and I don't live in a high crime area or anything, but things can still disappear, so I'd still have to get some sort of a locking mechanism for it too, adding more expense. However, mounting it in this fashion will alleviate all of those concerns. If you want to do this project, there's some obvious caveats, however. You do need to have a trailer box. If you don't, then your project cost just went from $5 to $105. And number two, you need to have a trailer. If you don't have one of those, your cost just went from $105 to $1,105. Give or take. Here's the materials I used. I've got my spare tire, obviously, and then I've got two carriage bolts. These are, I think they're 7 16 by 9 inches long, and these are going to go up from the bottom through the wheel up into the toolbox. And then we're using carriage bolts for a couple reasons. You don't want to have a hex on the outside where somebody can turn them with a wrench, and also you want to keep this toolless. You don't want to have to be using tools underneath this to put it up or take it off. Four wing nuts that fit the carriage bolts. Although there's only two shown here, I use four flat washers. Uh, two pieces of furring strip. These are going to go inside the rim to create the mount. And then also optional, uh, depending on the quality of your toolbox on your trailer, uh, you might need this. Now I got a Harbor Freight one, so I'm going to need that. And then this, which is optional, about 12 inches of baling wire. So you might be wondering what this extra stuff is for, like these furring strips. You know, why don't you just take these carriage bolts, run them up through the wheel, through the holes that you drill in the toolbox, and then secure them with the wing nuts. Well, the fact is that if these carriage bolts are just loose, they're going to be kind of wobbling all over. You'll never be able to align them with the holes in the toolbox and get them up through and hold everything in place at the same time. Even if even if you got two people trying it, it still might be next to impossible. So we're going to create kind of a sub-assembly to where that these things are like rigid studs and it'll be a lot easier to get this mounted up underneath the toolbox. These are five lug wheels, so I've taken the furring strips and cut them at a slight angle because they're going to be offset when I set them in the wheel. They're not going to be straight across the center. I'm sure you're familiar with the way carriage bolts work. They uh, have this square shank. Uh, behind the button head and they'll make their own impression as a square hole uh, and then therefore the carriage bolt locks in and it doesn't turn. So this will go down through the wheel essentially though this is the bottom side. So this is the top piece, uh, the top retainer we'll call it. Now these holes here you might want to drill slightly oversized. This piece will get wet and as the wood swells those holes will close up a little bit and it might be difficult to get this off when you need to. Now that that's together, we have essentially a single assembly and these carriage bolts now are acting like studs and they're rigid. So as we take this assembly and we lift it up to put it underneath the box, these aren't going to be flopping around, they'll be easy to align. And you might wonder, is this really necessary here, this furring strip, and then the same thing on the other side? Why don't you just take the carriage bolt and run it straight through the hole in the wheel 
and then secure it on the other side with the wing nut. Well, on the bottom side, obviously, you need something for the carriage bolt to bite into. And again, we're using carriage bolts because they're secure and toolless. And you, if you run them directly through the hole here, they're going to either not bite and turn when you don't want them to turn or distort the hole. And on the other side, the piece of wood is necessary because this surface here is not flat, it's not flush. When we try to drive a wing nut down on there, it doesn't hold it securely, it kind of wobbles around, and it doesn't keep these two studs parallel and in a fixed position. Now, ideally, instead of using two separate carriage bolts, we just use a square bend U-bolt. And that might simplify things a bit. However, I could not find one that had exactly that span. I found this, but notice the offset in it, and that's because it's designed to fit on the frame or the channel of a trailer, and then the width changes to accommodate the bolt pattern. And for the way I'm using it, this has to run straight through all the way to the bend, so that's not going to work. Later, after the fact, I found this, in which case I'd only use the U-bolt and not the bracket. However, that's 16 bucks, which would violate my rule of building this as cheap as possible. So there may be a slightly simpler, albeit more expensive solution to make this bracket with as many times as I'm going to need to take it apart and put it back together, which is basically any time I get a flat tire on my trailer, which is almost never, it's not a big deal. I drilled two holes in the bottom of the trailer box, obviously the same spread as the studs are in the subassembly, making sure to keep those away from the back wall some distance, that way there's room to turn the wing nuts. And then this is where that other piece of furring strip comes in. This is going to distribute the weight of the spare across the entire width of the box instead of having it in just two localized areas. If you've got a heavy duty box with a thick gauge steel, this might not be necessary. I'm taking the spare tire bracket assembly and lifting it up underneath the box using my floor jack. Uh, you can do it without the floor jack, but it's definitely easier with it. You might look at these bolts and say they're a lot longer than they have to be, but the longer they are, the easier they are to see when putting this up from underneath and easier to align with the holes in the box. Here are the wing nuts I'm going to use to secure this from inside the box. And what I've done here is drilled holes through a wing on each of these nuts so that I can add a safety wire. So I definitely don't want these loosening up and backing out. And generally what you'd use in a situation like that uh, is like a split washer, for example, to keep tension on the nut so it doesn't back out. But I'm not going to trust that in this particular situation. If that tire falls off, especially at freeway speeds, it's going to start tumbling underneath the trailer and you know it's just going to get caught just right and that trailer is going to go airborne. So this might seem overly complicated maybe as I'm just describing everything as I'm going along, uh, but once uh, all the pieces are built, it's rather simple. I did the same thing with my first utility trailer about 12 years ago. I got a flat one time in those 12 years and that gave me the opportunity to try this out. So dropped this off the bottom of the trailer, switched it out, took the flat, just threw it in the back of the pickup truck till I got home. After I got the spare fixed, reassembled the bracket and got it back mounted up underneath the trailer in about 10 minutes. I'm just showing here how I'm safety wiring this, just uh, wiring one wing nut to the other wing nut. And this safety wire doesn't have to be super taut between the two bolts. Uh, it doesn't have to be like aircraft specifications or anything. As long as you've got these two tied to each other, neither of them is going to loosen up more than, say, a quarter turn. And this is a clip of me removing it. And it seems like one stud always hangs up a little, so a little kick usually gets it to drop to the ground. And of course you have to remove the rest of the bracket before using the spare, but because it uses wing nuts, no additional tools are required. And of course once that's all mounted, close the box, lock it, and now my spare tire is also locked. It's out of the way, somewhat inconspicuous, and it only cost about $5.